Dear fellow coders, welcome to One Little Coder. If you decide to build the next Grammarly, then one of the things that you must have to take care of in grammar is punctuation marks. So today we are going to learn how you can use deep learning thanks to the library, thanks to the thanks to the model that has been open sourced by Oliver. We are going to use that deep learning model to create a solution that will help us fix the punctuation marks, like fill in punctuation marks wherever punctuations are not available. So the demo quickly, thanks again for uploading that model on Hugging Face. So there is a text that says, my name is Clara and I live in Berkeley, California. So when I say compute, you can see that the model has decided that there should be a comma and there should be a full stop here. So basically what this model does is, it takes care of six labels, if I'm correct. So one is zero when there is nothing to be added. Then there is a dot, then there is a question mark then there is a comma, then there is a colon, and then there is a hyphen, so dash. So it takes care of all these things and it identifies which part of the sentence, which punctuation marks should come, and then it also gives you that result. So today, I'm going to show you how you can implement the same on a Collab notebook or a Jupyter notebook, wherever you are, and based on that, if you want to transform that or build a web application on top of that, you can do that. So first of all, we have to appreciate the effort that Oliver Gur has put together in uploading this model and also open sourcing this model. Thanks to Oliver for making this available on Hugging Face. That is giving us a very easy way, easy gateway to implement it in within our notebook. So to demonstrate this solution, I'm going to use a Kaggle notebook. And the, at the end of this video, you would be able to build something like this, where if you give an input text, you would be able to see the highlighted punctuation marks added by the deep learning model. So this is our end product from this tutorial. So to start with, I'm going to start a new notebook, Kaggle notebook. All I have to do is go here, click and then click new notebook and you would get something that looks like this. Once you get this thing, so all you have to do is make sure, go to settings, then you have internet on. Because when we are going to install new libraries, it's important for us to make sure that the internet is on no Kaggle notebook. So you would have got a Python notebook. Remove everything that you have got. There are two libraries that you might want to install. One is sentence piece. The second one is transformers. Sentence piece is a dependency for transformers on Collab. It is mandatory to install sentence piece. If you do not need sentence piece, like just install transformers and then try to do the rest of the task. If you find any error where the exception is thrown, where the error is thrown that you have to install sentence piece, then you can install it. Otherwise, just ignore it. So transformers is a hugging face transformers library, which we are going to use to download the model, which we are going to use to do this exact task of punctuation correct. So after that, um, you have to download the model. So this is the model page. I've added this for your reference. This Kaggle collab notebook, sorry, Kaggle notebook would be added in the YouTube description just below the like button if you want to like it as well make sure that you check it out. You can go ahead and then copy the notebook and start working on it. So from transformers, I'm importing auto tokenizer, auto model for token, token classification and pipeline. So we're going to define a tokenizer and this is the model. So all we have to do is go here, copy the path, and then you have to come back here and paste it. So auto tokenizer from pre-train, get the tokenizer, and then same way, auto model for token classification, from pre-trained and then you have to download the model. So once you have tokenizer and the model in place, the next thing is you need to define your input text. So currently I've got an input text that says, this model predicts the punctuation of English, Italian, French and German text. There is no punctuation mark as such if you see this text. One of the important things that the developer or the creator of this model has called out that this data set consists of political speeches so therefore the model might perform differently on text from other domains. So that's something that you need to keep in mind um, because they have used political text. So keep that thing always in mind. But again, uh, from what I've tested, uh, this works fine for me. So after you define the text, now let's define a pipeline because that makes it easier for us to use the model. So we are defining an NER pipeline. NER stands for named entity recognition if you're not aware of it. So we are basically going to treat all these individual labels so all these individual labels, it's going to be treated as different entities. 
and then our text is going to get labeled across all these entities so if if you don't need any punctuation mark then it goes to zero and based on whatever punctuation mark is required it gets added to individual entities so we are going to create a pipeline called pun pun intended and um, that's a, that's an entity named entity recognition and uh, we are going to use the model that we just downloaded and also the tokenizer that we just defined then once we have the text and also the pun defined so pun of text will give us the output json again i wanted to call it out especially output json because the output format here is json so when you print out that so i'm going to just execute this final part so that you know you don't waste the time seeing me downloading the actual model but this notebook should work fine when you copy and edit it so when 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 we print the output of the json the, the output of this pun you can actually see that there is an underscore added here at the start of every sentence that's more like you know um, the center like the start of the word and also you have couple of other values one is the score uh, the second one is the entity type like i said like different punctuation marks are different entities there is an index value for that as well and um, the most important thing that we care about is the start and end so this defines the start and end in the input token so one two three four so you can see from first uh, from zeroth and fourth position like zeroth position till fifth position you can see that why did i say fifth i don't know zero to four maybe i should stick to python index so you can see the start end and the entity which is the label and the word word is something that we can still extract from the input text itself because um, we have the start and end but again the entity is the most important thing because it says what this particular token or this word has been classified into which means when it sits zero there is no punctuation required so like this it just goes on for every single thing which is have been identified for example one thing that you might notice is for italian you can see that there is a comma here and for the final word text you can see that there is a dot here so for different words you would see different punctuation marks based on whether it is required or not to make it easier for you to understand what i've done is i've uh, defined an empty string okay and then i'm going to iterate through the output and then i'm going to just extract the word and i'm going to just replace this underscore kind of a symbol and then i'm going to also replace the zero so we don't want to see whenever zero is there so i'm going to just replace it so that you'll be able to see only the output so it just says this model predicts the punctuation of english comma italian comma french i think ideally there should have been a comma but i'm not sure I'm, I'm not i'm not a native english speaker so probably if somebody is a native english speaker they can they can fix it so and german text so you can see that it has successfully managed to add two commas and one full stop that is very perfect for this sentence so at this point we are good we have managed to build a model we have built, managed to install the library that is required transformers and also lo uh, load the model download the model and tokenizer and define a named entity recognition pipeline and also thanks to pun we have the output json and we have also managed to parse the output json to give the output text the punctuation character text thanks to deep learning model now at this point we are good but you know good is not good enough all the time so what if we want to make this output text visually appealing so let's say you're going to build the next grammarly right that's what my pitch was at the start of this video you wouldn't want to just show this to your user but you might want to show something that looks like this and that's exactly what we are going to do in the next section of this video so if you if you don't need you know beautification of this output visualization you can just stop here and then start try out different sentences but again if you are interested in this um, beautiful visualization of these punctuation marks you should definitely check it out and this is not my own code uh, basically i've taken a code from alexander jung if i'm pronouncing the name wrong apologies so alexander has put together a very nice small script that helped me in creating the same thing you should definitely check it out this is also included in the kaggle notebook so definitely check it out so we are going to use display c from spacey for this and instead of using a typical normal spacey document we are going to use a manual method of visualizing named entity recognition using displacy so i'm going to define an empty ner you would see what is happening here so i'm just saying from the output json skip whenever the 
entity type is zero so basically we don't want to add any color to entity type zero so i'm just saying whenever entity type is zero just skip that and whenever entity type is not zero which means dot or comma or colon or hyphen or dash or whatever that is then create a list that looks like this and the list contains the start value the end value which is like the position right the index not the index index but the position of the word and also the entity type what is that entity and take this list which i've created as tim and then append it to my empty list because in every iteration we are going to have something right so when i print this thing you can actually see from 38 to 46 we need comma after that word 46 to 54 after that word we need comma 72 to 75 77 sorry we need a dot so this is how it has been defined now what we have to do next is we have to define a color combination so what is the color that you want when it is zero what is the color that you want when it is comma it is the color that you want when it is dot question mark colon and dash so this is the colors that has been defined and in this case you can see that the first color is only uh, something for zero and everything else is same so just left it same for every other punctuation mark but if you again want different colors for different punctuation marks just like how hugging face shows right they have one for comma they have one for dot if you want to do something like that you can of course do it but to make it simple i've just used one color for zero one color for any other punctuation mark and i'm not even visualizing zero so if if you are visualizing zero you can still keep it so the next thing is we are going to say what are the entities and these are the entities and these are the colors so we have defined the option for our visualization this display c visualization the next thing is we need to also give the entities in such a format that display c library can render it so for this is the format that has been required you can see you can also see this in the spacey documentation if you go to spacey documentation you can see this is how they want it so if you are going to manually give like there is a section called rendering manually if you are going to manually ask display c to render your named entity recognized recognized text then this is the format in which you have to give you need to have like a like a dictionary that has start end and also the label so that's exactly what we have done here and again like i said we have taken alexander's code here the start end and label we are going to iterate through every single element and then we are going to create something that looks like this so now is the magic show the magic show here is that we have defined our text and we have defined start end the same thing that we just did which is our entities and finally a title for us to display so i'm calling it deep learning powered punctuation creator so what like you can you can create whatever you want and then now that we have it ready we are going to use display c dot render and the 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 thing that we just created instead of usual uh, spacey document so we are using this and then we are saying the style should be entity ent for entity recognition the other one is like you can have dependency chart like um, the one with different arrows but yeah we here we have used entity type and then we are saying specifically that this is a manual visualization you know just using um, the output of spacey and then finally the options that we just created the color for different entities once you have that just execute that uh, you would have this output in place so it basically says this model predicts the punctuation of english italian blah 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 and then wherever the punctuation mark is there you would see this color highlighted if you are trying this on google collab this might not render so you have to explicitly render so i've added a code at the bottom that would say like even if it is on your jupyter notebook you have to separately import the html and display from um, ipython code display and then you have to use those functions to display your like render your html object but here it is not required on kaggle collab sorry kaggle notebook i don't know why i keep on saying kaggle collab so on kaggle notebook you don't need that this itself renders there is a, there is an implicit render but um, implicit render of html content but if you specifically want to use a code to render html content on your jupyter notebook then you might have to add this so what i'm going to do now is uh, i think you have seen everything that we have done here probably you are ready to build your next grammarly for punctuation marks but again um, just because you know i've just run you through the code you don't have to believe everything i've said so i'm going to quickly change the text and then show you what happens when i use a different text so maybe we can use 
something that is available somewhere um let's let's look for some obama political speech political speech text and maybe we can um, we can just copy something maybe yeah so let's let's copy this sentence i don't know if it's going to take all this sentence let's see let's try our luck and then i'm going to paste it here yes to paste it here and oh the thing is we have we have punctuation marks here so what's the point so i'm going to probably reduce this and i'm going to say okay i thank president bush for for his service to our nation as well as the generosity and complete so we have a comma here and then we have a dot here let's see if the model is able to capture this i've never tested this thing so i'm as interested as you are so i'm going to run this and let's look at the output mm, maybe we can see if there is a comma okay it's very hard for me to visualize so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just go ahead and then i'm going to just start here and then say render it okay that has done the job very perfectly so you can see the input text that we just saw that there is a comma here and there is a dot here and it has gone very well so let us test one more sentence probably at these moments okay that's that's quite long for me to okay this this looks better let's finally test this and then say it's an amazing model and thank oliver for it okay let's see so i'm going to delete this i'm going to so i'm removing one dot and two commas run this again now fund the text i'm not going to run the output text because maybe maybe i should just just run it for the sake of clarity otherwise everybody would complain about how terrible jupyter notebook is and then run this run this run this run this okay it says on this day so it has missed out this comma you can notice but it has managed to fit in other commas like fear and discord so all in all this is an amazing i shouldn't call it a library this is an amazing model that has been open sourced by oliver thanks to oliver so if you want to give a shout out to oliver please go ahead um, and you know oliver has got oliver's website here listed and also you can find twitter so give a shout out to oliver and also shout out to alexander for the final part that makes this entirely look beautiful and also thanks to hugging face to make it easier for anybody to use their library and then build applied nlp that is almost state of the art technology so everything has come together very well oh, oh, we forgot to thank kaggle for giving us this amazing free computing space should i thank kaggle or google so i don't know probably whoever runs this thing thank you so much and again if you want to thank me please give me a thumbs up on the video and again share your comments in the youtube sec youtube comment section it would mean a lot to me if you build this solution i would love to see what you have built and stay tuned stay safe happy coding